The last me sermon that the Apostle Paul did in Ephesus was a very long message. He took the whole night preaching, and even one of the young men of that church fall asleep and fall down from the, the window and die, and the Apostle Paul resurrected because of such a long message. But today is my last message here in CN, so I, you know that I always preach very long. Unfortunately, today I can only preach 10 minutes because I had to go down to read the, the whole church. So, as I always say to my students in the school and here in CM, keep watching how you left your place before you leave. It's very important to what impression we give to people when we left a place. Let me ask you this question, how you left your home? before you go to work or before you go to study? How do you leave your marketplace or your business place or your office or your, your desk in the school before you go home again? And how do you leave your empty place in church when you go back to your journey every week? What impression, what legacy, what testimony we left when we left some place behind and people know that we were there. When I was a young boy in my country, we used to have this uh, kind of hobbies or maybe bad behaviors, that wherever we go, we put some kind of remembers uh, legend there. And especially people when they want, went to the park, people who are uh, dating, they used to, to write on the, on the trees, Christian and Karen were here. And when people pass, so they find that dead. These people were there in that tree or under that tree dating, and years later they come back to uh, collect their step. Well, don't be offended, but I used to write that also in the toilet, in the public toilet in, the, in my country. Christian was here. <laughs> I don't know what kind of impression people will have about that, but I'm, I'm sure that I won't back to that place again. So. I'm living today this church. After eight years of serving this community, uh, I came to this church asking to the senior pastor to send me as a missionary to my hometown. Well, I was keeping asking to the senior pastor until the last week to still send me as a missionary, but this dream never came true. But today I'm living this church not as a missionary, but as a preacher who will take care of the Latin American community that are that are coming, that is coming to Korea. They are people without church, they are people without pastor, and there are no pastors who can preach the whole counseling of the will of God to them. There are many sets that they are having Spanish ministry here in Seoul, in Incheon, a powerful, influential, rich uh, congregations, but they are sets, they teach heresy, there is a Spanish worship in Lotte Bequajong in Incheon. There is another uh, Spanish worship in Chamshil, Lotte War. And there are others in Ojumbu, but they are all belonging to, ch to a heresy. There is no a right church with right theology, with a right former pastor who can preach to Latin American people here in Korea. I took the challenge one year ago. I took the, the the, co the compromise to be that person. And today, I live in this place to make that state of faith. What is the legacy that we have in God? Let me tell you that you, CEN, you are the legacy of God. You are a legacy, <clears throat> and your legacy is made out of the moments that make a difference for the kingdom of God. The greatest legacy one can pass on One's children and grandchildren is no money or any material thing, but rather the legacy of the character or faith, says Billy Graham. Gillis Mori, an American pastor, he said to that true leaders don't invest in buildings. Jesus never built a building. They invest in people. Why? Because success without a successor is failure. So your legacy will, should not be in buildings, programs, or projects. Your legacy must be in people, says Monroy. We are here to build a legacy, a spiritual legacy. Quite 
lean into things that are outside of our control and let go to we have to let go and get out of God's will so that we can do what he needs what it needs to be done think about your legacy because you are writing it every day of your life people will read your story later your grandchildren your children your friends create irresistible environments to lead people to Jesus that's the kind of leg legacy that we have to build in our life. How can we prepare for our legacy? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us an example. And the Bible teaches about his life. The Lord uses his ancestry. He was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. He was a, uh, the, from the tribe of Benjamin. He, the Lord uses his background. He was uh, a Jew, but he was raised in the Hellenist uh, countries. He also used his citizenship because he was a Roman, even though he was a Jew. And the Lord uses his dialect because he could speak Greek, he could speak Latin, he could speak Jew. And the Lord uses his education because he was former under Gamaliel instruction. So now we see that we can also have the opportunity that the Apostle Paul had it to make a legacy in people's life and in the place that we left. In the farewells, last speech of the Apostle Paul, he encouraged the Ephesian elders to defend their faith, to take care of the church. Paul, in his last speech, he also defended his behavior in front of the elders. He said he was humble. He said that he, he preached with faith, with tears. And he didn't take anything from anyone. And he also spent most of the time visiting people in their houses and preaching in public. Paul presents his charge uh, along with a warning to the elders, and he also committed to God. What example we have in, in Paul's life? What legacy we have in his personality and character? Paul ident identified with the people, as we can read the scripture in verse 18. Serving God with humility and tears, going from house to house, enabling him to know what were the needs of the members of the church. Paul was a teacher too. He was a witness to the gospel. He was innocent of the blood because he testified about his conversion all the time to people who were listening to them and receiving the gospel through him. He proclaimed the whole will of God. He suffered because of it ends. And also, he, this suffering that he have, as he predicted, drive him to obey the word of God, to obey, to put his life in sacrifice, even though he have regular warnings that he will suffer in the future. Yes, as I see the Apostle Paul these days, we are having a, a, in Kitsien, the QT Marathon through the book of Acts. And every day as I read the book of Acts, meditating on the life of the Apostle Paul, I could imagine how God is preparing me to this new journey. And here, as him, I letting down everything, knowing that, yes, this church will continue taking care of wonderful people that will come to preach. But we have now to live knowing that our Lord in the, our labor in the Lord was not in vain. In verse 28, the Apostle Paul, he charged to the elders and giving a warning saying, keep watch over yourself and all the flood of which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers. Be shepherds of the chairs of God, which he bought with his own blood. One important legacy that we have to live is discipleship in every church. The Lord, before he went up to heaven, he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, baptizing them, everything that he had taught. As an English ministry pastor, it was not easy for me to make disciples because language was a big barrier. And as I tried to disciple the fluent speakers in English hearing CEN, as soon as they have their own plans in life, they left this ministry and went back to their hometowns or went to abroad. So 
one of uh, my uh, remorse, if, if I make a disciple from CEM, if I make one disciple here in this ministry eight years, I don't know. Only God knows. I just know that I throw the seed of God into the hearts of many children and people who came here during these eight years. I see many generations coming and go. Foreigners from all over the world coming and go. And now is my time to go. The elders of the church were warning because they have to keep watch over themselves. I would say the same words to you. Keep watch over yourself. Even though we, are, we won't be here, I want to know that your faith is growing. They also, also have to watch over the floor that they are overseeing. There's a ministry here in seeing that won't stop. There's a kids ministry that is growing every day. And we don't know what's going to happen with the second service. Today, it's a very unique day. Many people are here. I'm so pleased. But this is not the regular attendance of every Sunday. I don't know how disappointed will be Pastor Bill next week when we see only two, three people here worshiping in English in this time. The elders must shepherd the flock, tending, caring for, feeding, protecting, and leading this congregation because, as I say the, the last year, one pastor in the early morning service that I attend in Sondo, he said, we must preach or teach or ministry one person as we are ministry 10,000 people. Married Teresa, she said that when one reporter asked her, how is it possible that so many people love you and so many people feel that you love them? She replied to this reporter, I don't love many people and I never love many people. I just love one person with all my heart and I'm showing everything that I can to teach them to worship the Lord as I worship. And that person love another person in the same way. And these two love other two in the same way. And these four love other fours in the same way. And that's why everybody feel that I love him in the same way because I just love one person with all my heart. I love seeing him with all my heart during these eight years. And I don't know how many of my students and members receive my love, but I hope that this love will transcend and bear fruits 100 per one. Now, in verse 32, the apostle commit the elders, and he said, I committed the people to God and his war. Now I committed you to God and to the war of his grace, says the apostle, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Yes, committing. Giving this responsibility to others is not easy. You will feel burdened to what's going to happen after Pastor Nera go. Like Teacher Lily say last week, Pastor, I never thought that CM will be without you. And I say, yeah, I never thought that too. But the time has come. And as Deacon Cho said this afternoon, this morning while he was praising, in the expressway, there are many gas station with place of rest, but never one single car stay there forever. So we must go to our journey. We must continue to and entrust in this ministry to others who are relevant people to continue serving the Lord in the same way. Why we do that? Because we want to bless. And as Apostle Paul ended this message to this Elder, he say, is more blessing to give than to receive. Paul didn't convey anyone silver or gold or clothing. Paul has supplied his own needs and the needs of his companion, and he showed that by hard work he held the weak. I hope that I didn't become a burden for anyone here in CN, and that never was my intention. I'm going to a new journey of faith without the support that I receive here in, in CEN. But I'm trusting the Lord that He will send support in the same way that He sent me support here in CEN. And it's God is in the, the way, and He's making a way. When there is no way, then we don't need to worry about tomorrow, because He 
knows every sparrow. What we have to do now? Pass the baton. This is my last message to you. To serve with humility. To teach and have faith. To preach the grace of Jesus. And proclaim the whole will of God. It's time to say goodbye, my friends. It's time to say goodbye, my loving church. It's time to say goodbye, see you. But I know that whoever's coming after me, he will do a better job. He will make see and great. I hope that my Lord here in CM was not in vain.